All right, let's get started. Let's check the new situation for today. Uh, how's the sound? Well, it looks good. Any issues, let me know. All right. Okay. Checking news. It's Monday, so I'm hoping we have maybe some pound news coming up, get things moving. All right. Monday, September 12th. So we... It's a light news day. Okay. Very light. So typically there may be pound news in 20 or so minutes, but not today. Had a bit of Euro news just nine minutes ago. But light stuff... So it was nothing until well into New York session. Five and a half hours from now. Light impact news for the pound. So a very light day for news. Not really even a concern. Keep in mind that, that light impact stuff, but it's a light news day. Tomorrow, it's Monday. So tomorrow we will have an hour and a half into the session. High impact news for the pound. Half an hour after that, Euro, so news-wise, is focused on tomorrow. Things get going with that. But lots of, actually, lots of news for the pound this week. So it's good timing to be on the starting at London Open. Big week for the pound. All right. So light news day. Let's get to the charts. Okay, start with the euro dollar. <clears throat> Let's remember where we are. We're in this little shrinking range from a weekly perspective. It's really no clear direction for months now. Uh, what is this? Oh, okay. <clears throat> so, but there are trends within this range, and it's, you know, it moves up and down. <laughs> doesn't really go anywhere in the end, but sizable moves once you get in there. Um, but let's see what we're looking at as far as first thing we're going to look at is the trend. <clears throat> Basically, we're looking at the structure of highs and lows. You could say we're sort of trending upward here, but go to the one hour chart. Higher highs, higher lows, mm, barely. It made a lower low here. So, and this is all kind of sideways, so I'm not really getting a direction either way. You just can't make it into new territory and stay there as you, as you look back. So as far as any momentum or direction or trend, it's pretty flat. Well, let's see what volume is telling us now about the background. Now, I had some strong selling Friday, but some buying off of this level, which is probably a FIB level. Let's just take a closer look at Friday's high volume stuff. Yeah, Some weakness here, some buying. It's sort of a mix. And it's late Friday. It's probably a lot of exiting. Here is certainly weakness in the background. And that was some high, high activity. So the first kind of no-brainer thing in the situation particularly if we don't have a really a direction we have to work off of what volume is telling us uh, there's large selling here so the easy trade that comes to mind is looking to short off of there that's the first thing now there are other levels we can look for but just the fact that there was so much selling before more likely would give it a short setup and that may be tomorrow But as far as anything sooner, well, here's a FIB level. Let's take a look at how it's behaving at least, how active the selling is. There's a decent sign of weakness. Kind of overshot that 618, but it did come back. 
Let's see. Well, if it's going to move up again, let's see if we get a double top and more selling here. Then that would really be tipping us off as to what's happening. So in the near future, and it looks like it might be moving up to get there. If we see selling again off this, this is kind of what we just looked at on the one hour, right? Same pattern. Large selling here might be large selling again. So if we see increase in volume sign of weakness here, it's likely coming down, going to test, and if there's not demand coming in, maybe trend down. So let's see how that behaves. So with no real overwhelming direction, again, there was a bit of strength here and, and some strong selling. Weakness here, sideways direction. Volume really needs to tell us to see what smart money's up to see them positioning so so far we do see the first spike which is some short positions so we'll take it from there see if they sell there again or what happens best thing we can do is test this again and get an answer so we'll see all right pound dollar so from the overview we have been trending down but we have spent a long time going sideways really since brexit so that was a while ago. This is a couple of months here. So range. And we did come down off the top of that range a couple of times, give or take. So we could say we're at the top of the range, a pretty large range, coming off the top, coming down. So it's coming down pretty strong. Let's take a look at if there's really weakness there, what's going on. Yeah, there was good selling into the up move there. Here a big mix, but really the selling one in this situation. Uh, pretty strong selling throughout here. Demand pops up, but it really just, the selling is overwhelming. And that's clearly, from a one hour point of view, not like the euro dollar. Lower lows, lower highs, downtrend going on, at least in the recent past, the momentum right now. Uh, if you kind of look at the pattern, the way it's behaved, the no-brainer situation here, look for a short... In here, I wouldn't mind seeing it test the 618, the 50 EMA. And let's see if weakness is coming in and how that's behaving. Yep. You see the weakness there as soon as we got to that area. This is really a mishmash of buying and selling here, which does include buying. But if we see consistent selling off of this area, and maybe we even go higher, as long as we see weakness in these areas, we'd be getting with the trend on a retracement. And really, that's the way it's been behaving pretty clearly. Uh, let's just check that low and how much demand is to the left. Or accumulation type of activity. No, it's not really there. Okay. So it could, could go higher, but it doesn't have to. Do we really like the weakness as far as potentially looking to get in? It's pretty kind of flat here, but it did stand out when we first got there. There it is. But really, we're getting into the session now, so... Let's see if activity increases. Uh... It's respecting this level pretty well. There's just not particularly volume spikes of weakness coming in, but it's not low. It's not horrible. Uh, but it's basically from here, it's testing for buyers off the support levels, demand, testing for demand. So we can see how that goes. If there's a test, at some of these levels, that would be the first area really. Okay, just got to keep checking on that.
All right, so AU. First thing that comes to mind is an obvious support here. Not really a direction trend-wise overall. It's been sideways for a while. <clears throat> One hour point of view. We're coming off at least downward momentum. But obviously there's a major support coming up. How far is that? 20 pips away. Give or take. So selling into a support, 20 pips above the support, and not exactly what I'd want to do. But we'll see potentially if there's strength coming in off of that support test, or if for some reason we move up, we can get weakness and look to short, not so much chasing it into support. Pound yen. Some really flat days, the last few days, rangy. So we basically trended up pretty well with this pound yen situation and then went sideways here, really pretty flat. Checking the volume, nothing really stands out. Some strong buying off of here, if we test there again. But we're sort of in the middle of the range, which is not great place to look if there's not a clear background volume wise which there isn't there's a bit of weakness there I'm buying there and this sort of stuck in the middle activity which and this stuff typically in that situation I'm looking to buy off support or sell off resistance not get into this you know into the weeds in the middle of the range so I would look for at this point either a long here or a short here if it sets up right it's kind of too too much of a range to draw a fib and you know treat it like some sort of trend. So bottom and top of the range, which is kind of similar to the pound situation. Yeah, it's probably going to set up for the short, the euro dollar, maybe the pound. All right. AJ, again, a range from daily point of view, but bearish at the moment, the recent momentum or trend. What is volume telling us? Well, we had a spike here at the lower prices. Is that demand coming in? Not so much. It's a lot of selling is what it is. So I would not look to go against this move. <clears throat> It's likely to continue down. Uh, what is it running into? Not much. It looks like it broke the fib already. That's done. There's nothing really there. Maybe you got some pivots or, or whole numbers or something, but as far as a support or any really special level, there's nothing really there to the left. Maybe this. <laughs> there's nothing there. It's free fall. Maybe there's a symmetrical fib extension or something. <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> Nothing stands out. So until really proper demand comes in, obviously this is bearish. If we have any sort of retracements, I'd look to short. I mean, you can go for the more aggressive scalp short on little retracement or a fib retracement or something. But this thing is still quite bearish. So we'll keep an eye on that for short opportunities. EJ. <clears throat> Again, no obvious trend on the daily. Four hour, you really don't have the trend structure, higher highs, higher lows, or anything that got lost. One hour point of view. Again, you really can't get a clear trend going, clear direction. So mark some support resistance. Maybe it's bearish, <laughs> kind of. I mean, bullish because we've moved up, but no, no obvious trend. So, what's volume telling us? Let me check that top on Friday. It looks like a good sell-off there. 
Yeah, there's good weakness there. It's pretty good. So we can work off of that in the background. If we test this level again, I would look for the short there. Oops. Could also draw the fib like we're looking at with the other ones. These are just kind of safer in a way because you could get weakness here and still spike into that and then come down. But if it sets up here, it's proper at least because we do have weakness in the background. But I, I would slightly prefer this one. It could, it could be a fake break anywhere in here. And then also this fib area. My second favorite place to look right now. Second option. All right. And there was a bit of strength coming in here, so maybe we'll get up there. If there's a no demand here, it's likely coming down, but... Mm, not exactly where I want to get into a trade, selling into this area. Okay. All right, we had a decent rejection here. The one minute does show this activity coming in at the high price, this weakness. So it's not bad. This is likely coming down here, the euro dollar. I uh, would look really stop loss on this area, six, eight ish, nothing huge. That's 20 pips away from where price is now. So maybe it would end up being a 25 pip stop. But with this much selling, just to explain why, this is the overwhelming volume right now, it's the sign of weakness here. This area, where we sort of ended up testing here for buyers moving up, not a huge sign of strength. And at least here we did see a little spike. This could have been higher price-wise and volume-wise, but we have that at least. If we see more no-demand stuff here, we can say this is our automatic support, right? First level of support after the weakness. So going forward, it's a test area. So if we see no-demand type of activity here, leading to the break, that would be the ideal entry at this point. Because it could come to this point and again bounce and get a little range or something, right? If, if there was a, at least there was more buyers and sellers at this price area before, so it could happen again. So if we see no demand, obviously it makes sense. And a break off of that, it's likely on its way now. So it's really that, or if we really travel up here again, we see weakness again. It doesn't have to be quite as high, but the higher the better volume wise and see more weakness again here and look for the setup off of that if it does end up going higher. If the sellers don't show up here then it's really kind of cancels the setup. So that should explain that. Now these are similar but if you notice the, the sign of weakness which stands out here clearly, I like clean setups. If there's two and one is cleaner than the other I'll take the clean one. Right. The pound, where's the weakness? It's there. It's a nice increase. But you have this sort of fudgy crap buying and selling in large amounts. Here's good selling off that zone again. Here, you'd like to see some weakness, but it didn't really pop up. Let's see the one minute. and yeah, nothing special. A bit. Okay, it's not bad. Not perfect. But again, it's just not slightly as clean as the euro dollar. But again, it could apply here if you're looking to short this off of tests here and no demand. So that is the pattern. So it looks like we're going to maybe get there soon. But the euro dollar is a little cleaner on that. So we'll see if that sets up. I'll take that. Again, just to review, AU is heading for support, and it's kind of low, and I'm not chasing it here. I prefer at least some sort of retracement. And we'll see what it does if it does get to that support. Maybe we will get a retracement before it gets there. Who knows? Okay. Pound yen. 
sideways, very rangy, no clear background. We have strength here, weakness here. So I'm treating it like a range. I look to buy here or sell here. Not get stuck in the weeds in the middle of this range. There's a lot of pound news coming up this week, so it's not going to stay there for long. And again, uh, AJ looking very weak, as I said, likely to keep going, but I'd prefer some sort of retracement to get in. It doesn't seem to want to do that. Even the 14 EMA tests hasn't happened since I've been here, really, no. So just got to let that go for now. But if it clearly stays bearish, I'll, I'll look for a retracement entry. It's not going to drop in a straight line forever. It's likely to give a retracement. We'll see how that goes. EJ, we have pretty good weakness in the background here, so bearish going forward. This was either here or here I'd like to sell. Now, if we test here, which is a support, and there's no demand test in this area, low volume, pause, and a break, that's reasonable. But if there's any sort of increase in volume here and a rejection, then I wouldn't mess with it. But if buyers really don't show up, that's reasonable. So we'll see how that goes. So again, no major news today. Okay, so here, you're a dollar. See what happens. So if it wants to behave and be a clean setup here, <clears throat> which as things start to pick up and get normal again, we'll start to see more of uh, a pause in activity here. So the sellers, which were pretty active here, bringing it down, pause their activity and test for buyers off of just a recent level that brought more buying than selling before. Put it that way, right? So the best thing to see here as they're pausing and seeing how much activity may be coming in is to see lack of activity. So if the sellers are pausing and the buyers are inactive, price should not be moving much. We can get low volume. So from that point of view, a seller, that could make you pretty confident that the buying is inactive and then we break here and look for the entry. So EUEJ, it's really the euro kind of driving this situation. They're correlated, even though they're different. They're both testing a support. So ideally, they, they get a little quiet here for the next five, three, five minutes. But that's what the market is doing right now. And if the, if the buying doesn't show up, we'll know. If it does show up, we'll know. It looks like it's not, right? <laughs> it's like no bounce whatsoever. Well, maybe a bit. Let's see. And they clearly paused at that level. 
after look at the last two, three, five minute candles. And then now compare it to this one. And it just doesn't look like the buyers are coming in. So I like the way it's behaving. Okay, it's trying to push. So let's see how it does a little lower here. So again, I'm looking at this potentially euro dollar short stop loss at six eight six nine. <clears throat> EJ Long? No, there's too much weakness in the background. I wouldn't just switch directions suddenly. That's really not that much volume either. So I'm looking to enter this. Let's see. I mean, it's it's not giving a no demand, but it did pause and test, and it's just kind of falling through. I want to see the way it behaves here. But I'm looking to enter. I do like the way it's behaving here, too. We just don't want to see it pop up below this level and turn into a sign of strength. That's really the last thing to make sure it's not happening. We saw the activity where it sort of paused and sat in the area like we wanted. Moved up slightly a little bit, but really didn't get much. And then some more pretty aggressive selling came in. So I think it's just going to kind of blow through this test area. Well, that is technically a push through entry, according to my method right there. Confirmed. So I am free to enter. Yeah, okay. So I'm in the trade now, euro dollar short. In the trade at four two and a half. Stop loss, like I said, uh six nine. One two six nine. So I'm in the euro dollar short. All right. So that is uh, basically more or less on the VSA type entries. The only way I get into a trade without an actual no demand there is if it behaves like that. So I'm not stuck needing a bullish candle here. It's, it's, it's closing below the test area on medium volume without a large rejection on price with closing up or anything like that. As long as it maintains this for four, five, six minutes now below this level, I guess, you know, we kind of understand. It's just the buyers didn't show up and the selling is pretty steady here, pretty aggressive. But sometimes we do a break test here. Break test continuation, whatever. So, but it's all intact unless we see like signs of strength on down moves or some issue, but otherwise it's fine. We may sit around. We don't have to be quick. Target, yes. So typically in a fib retracement of a down, lower lows, lower highs pattern, fib retracement, it's nice on the one hour too. You see the weakness. This pattern is nice. Um, the main target on these, so basically I have three targets most of the time, which basically means areas to look to take profit or really to get information as well as far as how much buying may be coming in uh, but we have this is sort of the main intraday target on these fib retracements is back to the low but the other two which could be partial profit early move your stop to break even stuff is the fib and how much you know uh, you know, it's about one to one when you get into there. But you want to have that level in mind. Of course, if there's strength coming in here, you may not make it down. So it's a good first target and area to watch. 
And then here's our main target. And of course, you could always add in the extension. Well, there it is. Well, there's, there's the 1618 extension. Or your symmetrical move is somewhere around there. But in this general area, if it wants to trend down another leg, that would I would expect that if demand is not showing up here. If it does, it may not continue down. So to sum up that, it's first target area, put something in the bank, partial profit, move stop to break even. See how much demand is coming in. If it's not a lot, then expect this area with no risk on the trade. Pretty much look to close it up unless really demand is not showing up and it's kind of blowing through. Maybe put a trail and catch another leg down. If we look at the big picture, that would be a valid fib, it seems. So we want to keep that 618 in mind, but this is pretty established as a support, so that zone. GU might come around and do its thing. But again, the five minute wasn't as clean on the setup. But similar pattern. This guy is just free falling the, the Australian dollar today. Can't even get the scalp entry off the 14. Well, there was one there, sort of. But that's really strong. If you're getting waves down without even touching the 14, that's exceptionally bearish. But still, I wouldn't chase it. I mean, if you want, you could take a no demand, but. Uh... And the EJ, and yeah, nothing really to do with that. It's sort of the really bad version of EU. I would have liked to sell higher if it gets up there. Okay, so this low volume close at the low is very good. Think of it as the opposite of a sign of strength, if that makes sense then. Sign of strength would be increased volume down here and some sort of rejection, right? But instead, we have a decrease. We're sitting here, so we're not attracting any buying. It's really the sellers for the taking. But they tend to pause and test. You make it a no demand, sit around, and all that. But we may not even get the break test continuation of the automatic support because there's just not enough buyers to do that. I mean, even not doing that pattern says something, right? Just lack of buyers, very good trade. It's all about the imbalance, right? Sellers are active, we know that. We need buyers inactive. Then we have the imbalance, high probability move in the near future. All right, so I don't see anything else right now. I'll be back in a few minutes. Too bad we don't have news really today to get things going. We'll see maybe the pound sets up. I'm not sure I would take it, but I'll point it out. And maybe some sort of retracement on the Australian dollar pairs. Pound, I'm not touching in this area, like I said. It's the middle of the range. That's really it. We can look at anything else if you want. Dollar Swiss is bullish, but I'm not surprised because your dollar is bearish, and 99% of the time they're just opposite. This is a push through in the opposite direction, same pattern about to happen perhaps, right? Same thing in reverse. This one broke though. So the euro is a bit weaker than the Swiss is strong, right? Right. Something like that. <laughs> then the Swiss weakness. The euro is weaker than the Swiss weakness. No, that's what I mean. What's this guy up to? If you want to look at any pair, let me know. All right, this is a clearly a strong uptrend. Dollar is basically a, a bit on the strong side here. So that's not surprising. That's kind of backing things up. Dollar is a bit strong. So this is a nice, let's back out, see where we are. Eh, range, yay. So every, every daily chart is a range. You have some momentum behind you in some direction, but start to go back and it's just same price area for months but that's summertime that will change soon
but this is a good uh, trend the last few days. Unfortunately, it's heading for a big resistance. Um, but if there's a retracement beforehand, like for example, looking in the future, it could do this sort of thing. Come down, get a fib retracement entry. So, but this is likely going to do what this is doing in reverse. I mean, if your dollar is moving down, this is these these are likely moving up. But the higher prices here are not showing weakness. So any sort of retracement, sign of strength stuff. It could even be this sort of fib retracement. If it stops soon, you'll have a fib to draw and look to buy on a retracement. Maybe some confluence. But if it goes higher, you got to redraw the fib. So we'll see about that. Okay, back in a few minutes. All right, so next checkpoint, let's really look at what it's heading into. Obviously, there's the FIB. And these are basically areas where demand may or may not come in, so let's find out when it gets there. Here's a little support. I have a couple of areas to watch. It's moving pretty well. It's a lot of... <laughs> bearish candles in a row without demand coming in. Buyers are nowhere to be found. Uh, but uh, we're talking about first target. Really, I'm looking for the 618 unless I see an issue with strength coming in in these areas. But really, to stick to the one-to-one, -one, at least I try to get up 20 pips before I touch the trade to keep some sort of good risk-reward ratio, um, unless there's a sign of strength on high volume. Then I can react to that. It would be silly if I couldn't. I can move my stop to break even or whatever. But unless that happens, really the 618, the lower area of this FIB area, is the first target where I would look to move my stop to break even, put some in the bank, see how much demand is coming in and what to expect. And we see some buying coming in there finally. Let me slow down and test. Let's see this guy. 
a little lower would be nice on a proper low volume test for the short. But again, not quite as clean as the euro dollar on that setup. I don't love it. Well, so as far as this, if this is going to retrace, maybe. It's very bearish. You see the low prices here not attracting signs of strength and demand. Nothing. Strong move. So it's likely to continue down soon, or at least test this low again soon. Is that option? I mean, it is the 14 EMA option, but that would be a pretty aggressive low place to sell, scalp-wise. But I like this confluence of the 50 FIB and the support. If sellers are active, if we can get up here, and this thing is still strong or, or weak, still seeing a lot of selling, the sellers will hit here. Fact. If they don't, then okay, maybe we're going to go up further and get a bigger retracement. But right now, that is a bargain, <laughs> or whatever you want to call it, to sell here. Because of the confluence and the, how efficient and, and out of balance this thing is. So, We'll see. If sellers jump on it here, then I'm willing to look to get in. It's 50 FIB, 50 EMA, and previous support term resist. In a very weak environment. So, so we'll see if that happens. Ah, I messed up the support. So that GU is kind of stuck. With all the pound news coming up this week, big big week for the pound. Maybe just skip it today. There could be a lot of exiting positions or some, you know. But the news moves once we get going with that. Could be opportunities. Okay, nothing to say for now. Wait and see. All right, let's see where we are. Top of the hour. So again, I am short the euro dollar. So we did get a bit of uh, increase, a bit of demand coming in. Nothing I would say is any sort of problem, but it tends to pause. I'd say sellers are uh, confident, but patient. When there was really opportunities where buyers were very inactive, they did take advantage of that and sell and mark it down pretty good. If there's a little bit of demand showing up, they may pause, wait for that to dry up, and then go for another leg down. That's where it really hit. You see in the one minute low price principle. 
and it's becoming a bit of a support. But does it really stand out as an issue? No. And here we saw very little buying. So in this price area, if we pop up again, we may end up with a no demand situation there anyway. But that's the automatic support. So that pattern still may happen. As I say, it often does. The break of this and then the test of it again, you get like a no demand thing and then you continue down. So maybe we get that. If it goes above here, then it's sort of breaking down. It could range for a while and it's starting to lose the pattern. So we'll see what we get. Pound is stuck. Yeah, again, let's wait for that news most likely tomorrow. Newsy week for the pound. AU. Again, very bearish. If we can get this level and weakness there, it would be likely a good situation. That's really what I want. Is that too much to ask? It looks so good, too. <laughs> you get a sign of weakness right there. It would be pretty. If it drops sooner, so be it. I'll miss it. But that's what I'm looking for. All right. What else were we talking about? Okay, well, this is an example of a failed markup, that's for sure. Strength, 14 EMA test, not much weakness, looking good. Push through, looking pretty darn good. And then, bam, selling. And it's right back. It's like this would hit the strength and come back. That's what happened here. Hit weakness and came back off of the strength. So that's a situation. If you're looking for the dollar Swiss, in the recent history is... Active buyers, active sellers, mishmash. Still overly overwhelming overall is bullish. But now is not the time to look to buy. It could have been a decent setup there. And those sellers may go away, of course. Going forward, if you have another test of this area and you get why does that keep you get uh, no supply stuff this doesn't happen again then it's more likely to move up mm -hmm. again dollar cad very bullish don't want to chase it but if we get a retracement particularly this level, but here, potentially long. When this stuff appears, it kind of just is nice. It means the market's cleaning up uh, as far as confluence levels, things that really stand out. When you start to see like three things, like the 618, Previous resistance turned support, and you may even get like meet up with a moving average or something else. And then get a sign of strength. You know, it's like four things saying you're likely to bounce. That is always the best. So looks like some of that's starting to come back. Maybe it's that I'm on earlier. And things are cleaner. I don't know. I'm actually in a euro dollar trade. What have I been saying? I mean, it was August too. I'm thinking of, but still recently, the euro dollar doesn't move while I'm here. But here we have a trade today. That was New York. Okay, be patient. Nothing really to do here. I know what we're looking for. All right, just checking in. There hasn't been much to say. Euro dollar trade 
This last candle is a good one. Uh, closing down this little support that's built up on low, decreased medium volume. So, as I say, think of it as the opposite of strength coming in, when that would be high volume rejection. So we're kind of running into this again, hopefully lower prices on decreased volume, giving those sellers that uh, confidence to mark it down a bit now. AU looking for this price really to get in. Weakness off of here or this area, but maybe right on there. Uh, what else was it? nothing this will be nice if that comes around all right no immediate setup anywhere else but again I'm really looking for this area to take profit we're just kind of sitting here so I'll point out what's going on but the best thing you can see is lower prices on medium volume If, they, if high volume comes in at lower prices, then it's time to maybe move the stop to break even or see what we get from that. That's it. There's no high impact news today, so. Oh, all right, it's trying. By the way, just to point out, it, it's not a horrible entry here if you want to be aggressive with this bear situation on AU. There is technically no demand just about confirming now off the 14 EMA. It's probably this too. Not even. <laughs> a little too aggressive for me right now. And this will likely correlate. I think if the euro dollar moves down, this will probably move along with it. So I'm good. But this was the support right now. So going a bit lower after that last candle, not a surprise. All right, so we're just looking at it as it goes. But again, unless there's a high volume sign of strength where we get to this area, I'm not managing the trade in any way just yet. Okay, check back soon. Actually, let's take a look at the one minute on that. Again, it's not like I'm going to manage the trade here unless something crazy happens with very large demand, but just to learn and do the analysis. So here's where we broke into new low ground, which of course reveals how much demand may be around. If you look at the volume here, it's a bit, but it doesn't really stand out as an issue. It, let's say this was a spike up really high as we tried to move down. That would be an issue. The lower, the better. So you see, you know, it's a bit of buying but nothing that's going to really mess the whole setup up, you know. So people get into two-minute, three-minute charts. <laughs> I messed around with that, of course. I've tried everything. I've tried anything twice. Um, but I ended up dropping that, yeah. Some people use that. VSA traders. Three-minute. You can get that on your MT4. There's indicators that'll do that. All right, you see the five minute volume, no issue, right? We want lower prices on lower, the better volume. So that's low, that's good. I think sellers are just being patient. But it's really, they're really in control of this, very little demand. And there's AU with a confirmation of a very aggressive short that I'm skipping. GU. 
Again, I'd rather probably wait till the new stuff and everything and not double up on short something dollar, but and this setup wasn't so great. Having said all that, no demand push sort of entry here like we were looking at initially with the euro dollar we did. Kind of the same thing, but not as good. And it was this. So it's that pause, maybe a no demand. Okay, so 50 Fib here, very important. We're going to see the reaction. There's typically going to be some increase in demand at this area. You see, it, there it is. Nothing horrible, though. So that's looking good. Really, if you look at it, it's about average. Pretty aggressive selling, too. All right, well, what was my entry? Four, two. Yeah, so like I said, really got to leave it until the lower area here. Not far before I touch it, but uh, unless there's strength. But so far, it's fine. There's going to be a little more buying in here. It's going to happen. It's not bad. There goes AU. There really wasn't much buying here, so it's likely to try to break that. AJ, yeah, they're likely to break. Okay. Your dollar is a couple of pips from first target. I'd like to be a little higher than what am I up? 16 pips, but 618 is 618. I respect the 618. <laughs> uh, first thing I'm doing is moving my stop to break even. My screen is paused now, so if you want to see, you got to look in your chart. Get right back to it. So stop at break even. 4 2. And it's getting quite active here. So I may close a third of the trade. It is the first target. It is quite active. Could be a selling climax. Maybe, maybe not. Considering closing a third of my position. I'm just considering closing a third. I got my finger on the button. Stop is at break even. Okay, I did that. So I took off a third of the euro dollar short. Okay, now my screen is back on it. <clears throat> All right, good. So a little something in the bank and no risk on the trade. So the further targets we were talking about, really the main thing to expect today, realistically, is to get down to 12 whole number support yesterday's low. 
that's pretty much the projection for the rest of the day. Very simple. Unless you see overwhelming demand, it's likely to end up down there soon. So these other trades, again, they weren't as clean on the setup. GU short starting to come around, maybe. AU, as I said, is sort of an aggressive entry there off the no demand. That may be moving along. These guys breaking down. Nothing here. All right, so I think I'm good. But I didn't want to really double up on shorts. I was good with that. Just taking the best one for today. EJ never bounced for that, but that's all right. And this is a pretty decent setup to look for here. Oh, my screen's paused. Uh, as far as anything in the future, looking for this dollar cad long here. This didn't happen. It was the scalp. That's just probably going to fall until it really hits proper demand. These 14 EMA scalps should be good until it runs into something support. All right, so I'm going to call it a day since I don't think there'll be anything else. So we got a bit of volume. It's not bad. That's a big candle in really the area where if demand's coming in, it's really hitting at this point. That's why it's there. That's why it puts them in the bank. It's really not that high. And again, considering the size of that candle, it's not a lot of volume, so it's good. It's not really strength coming in. There we go. A bit of buying hit there. <clears throat> but yeah, the last thing I'll say is if we do get a good spike in volume, you know, something comparable to this, something that really stands out over the recent range, this is not horrible, but it's there. A little higher as it tries to move down. It may cause a bottom and a bounce, and you could always take a little more profit off, you know, 10 pips down from here or whatever. Yeah, some good aggressive selling to, to like just blow, try to blow through that 618. Pretty cool. <laughs> I like it. Buyers are there, though. I see how it pops up. I think these sellers are, are gaining steam. Because, uh, you know, the alternative, which is kind of more common, is you're going to pause here and test. They're just blowing through it. Fine with me. So these uh, one-hour boxes are pretty accurate, you know? So that's where we can run into possibly some demand coming in. Plus, it's pretty much 12-hole number. So if you really want to be disciplined, you're holding on till that, unless you see a sign of strength, which should really never be ignored. All right, so hopefully it's pretty clear on managing the trade. Let me know if you have any questions before I go. That pretty much covers it, I think. Whoa, there goes the pound. Oh, well. Well, everything's behaving as predicted, and I caught my, my move. So I like my first session back at London Open. Everything went pretty much. If we made a prediction, it happened. All right, guys. So, yeah, I will be here, I promise, consistently at 3 a.m. Eastern. New York Open. Uh, sorry, London Open. <laughs> That's a new. London Open. So, at least now until December. That's what I'm doing. I will be here. All right, guys. You know what to do. See you tomorrow.